to my reaction review of If Loving You Is Wrong, the tape. The kids are asking Brad where he was last night. You just left us in the house. He told them he was next door talking to Miss Marcy. Eddie them just barged in the house, hollering over the kids, saying, hey, why you didn't tell me about the kid? And telling the kids to get out, go work somewhere else. Eddie said, he, he said, Brad said he didn't want the kids to know. Keep your voice down. Eddie said, they have eyes. They're going to know. Eddie telling Brad to kill her. Because no one embarrasses you like this. Eddie said, if he don't go up there and tell his uncle, he's going to do it himself. Eddie said, you take care of this or I'm going to do something to get us all in trouble. He acting like it was done to him. Even though he, he was cheating on his wife. And he's still cheating on his second wife. Randall's mom is downstairs fixing coffee. Marcy's coming to the room. She's telling Marcy she's going home tomorrow. Marcy is hugging her. She appreciates that she understands what she's going through. She's asking her, how do I get over it? She told her, sometimes people don't get over it. Maybe you're one of those people. Marcy says she still loves Randall. His mom says, I know. Marcy said, do you? He says, yes. Anybody with as much passion about hurting some somebody has got to love them or hate them. Marcy says she feels both. Mama says that's impossible. Marcy says she's embarrassed about sleeping with Brad. She feels embarrassed and humiliated. She says she drinks to slow her mind down. To keep thinking to forget about things mama said if you're hurting and in pain you can't trust yourself and you really can't trust yourself if you're impaired Ooh. marcy says you're right mama said yes i am that's not bad for an old b marcy apologized for that mama said i apologize for calling you a loose whore Marcy said, I didn't hear that. Mama said, I was thinking it. And they both started laughing. Ed is upset because Pete didn't come to meet them at the bar like Ben said he would get him to do. Ben explained that he didn't have a chance to, Pete didn't have a chance to look at the tape because Esmeralda walked in. But while he was trying to tell him that, he was butting in and, 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 and talking. And how do you know he didn't get a chance to see the tape? And, and Pete, Ben's girlfriend, was getting ready to say something. And Eddie said, shut up, B. You shouldn't even be here anyway. She said, are you going to let him talk to me like that? He said, hold on, hold on. Ben started talking about he was in pain. And Eddie said, is that the real reason you called me here? And he reached in the, the middle compartment and gave him some pills. Ben said, what do you want me to do? He said, I don't want you to do anything. Get away from my truck. He said, I'm, he, I think he said, I'm coming to the precinct tomorrow and Pete, and Pete is dead. I think that's what he said. I'm coming to the precinct tomorrow and Pete is dead. The new lady, Claudia, is introducing herself to Pete. Pete was trying to hide the tape. Pete was looking at the tape of uh, Eddie shooting Ben hand off. And the girl, the new girl, after he sent her away to go get some coffee, but she came back and he didn't notice her walking into the room and she was standing back there looking at the tape. Ben came in the room and asked Pete what he was doing after he took the tape out. He asked him what he was doing. Ben was, Pete was looking nervous and he said nothing, you know, and he walked on away. And Ben was talking to the new girl and, and she said, oh, I'm sorry. And then he said, sorry about what? About what happened to you? He said, I wish people to stop talking about it. She said, oh, okay, I'm sorry. And she said, I only got a glimpse of it. And he said, got a glimpse of what? Of, of what happened to you? I only got a glimpse of it on the tape. And uh, then uh, rushed off. He rushed off and went to the restroom to call Eddie. Eddie's doing drugs in the bed we have a problem he telling 
Eddie about the new girl antique salt tape. <laughs> Eddie said he coming in right now. He can't wait on the captain. Then they panned a, a full screen and there was a lady on his lap sleep. And he he hit her in the head and said, wake up. Wake your whore ass up. That's what he said. We don't have time for all that groggy stuff. <clears throat> we don't have time for all that groggy stuff. Natalie is visiting Kelly at the office. Kelly said, you want the good news or the bad news first? She said, it's going to be a little difficult for you to get along. They can get along, but they both have to do it together, her and Lucian. They can get up to $300,000 loans. Kelly's telling Natalie that um, the reason they can get so much of a loan is because of Lucian. Lucian's credit is good. He has a good relationship with the bank. And he has $200,000 in the bank. Natalie didn't know. So because she was acting surprised, Kelly asked her, does Lucian know about this? Did you sign his name? And Natalie said yes. So he, she's, she has information that Lucian didn't tell her. Kelly saying she could get fired for that. Kelly is telling her not to tell Lucian about her knowing how much money he got. Nelly says she over here struggling. He got that kind of money. Kelly is begging her not to say anything. Peter's in the locker room. Ben came in there and asked him what happened to him last night. Ben is constantly trying to get Pete to go out with him and asking him questions about where he was and what he's doing we hung out we graduated at the academy together what is up with you he got serious with him and told him to give him a break back up give him space eddie walked into the door and said yeah give him a break and he walked in front of ben and told ben to get on get gone he said you back at work eddie said am i standing here he tries to walk past eddie holds him back not not so fast. Eddie said, I, I know you got the disc. Make his life easier and give it to me. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. Eddie said, he talked to the lady at the store and there's only one copy. So give me that copy. He said, do you really want me to show you face to face what how I do things around here? I know you got it. Pete's constantly saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Pete will not be intimidated. He told him to open the locker or you're going to die. He said, I'm not scared of you. Pete said, he going to the captain. Eddie grabbed him. He said, if you go to the captain, you won't live one day in these streets. You hear me? He said, you ought to know I don't care about shooting anybody. As a matter of fact, I get off on it. Pete looked like he about to cry. But he's still saying he don't have it. Eddie jerking up, him up against the uh, locker. Pete's trying not to cry. Lucian to the rescue. Lucian to the rescue. Lucian said, what are you doing here? He know he ain't supposed to be back because the captain hadn't called him back. Talking about we're going to be riding together again. Don't you, do don't you love that? Lucian asking Pete what, what that was about. Pete said he just mad. Lucian know he lying to him. You need to tell him, Pete. Pete trying, he, he about to cry. Tell Lucian. Because he will kill you. Eddie will kill you. He crying. He says, so we're not riding together. And can't you just tell the captain you want to ride with me? Lucian tell him he got to ride with Eddie because he's his partner. Tell him. I don't think he want to tell him the truth because he already lied and told him he didn't get the tape. Lucian asked him, is he okay? He said, he's fine. He's sucking it up. He's telling me he's fine. You need to tell somebody, Pete. Because Eddie can kill you and, and nothing be done. Because don't nobody know nothing. Break in the lock of Lucian. Get the tape. Kelly's coming home and what's his name? The next door neighbor's son is cutting the grass with his shirt off. And she just looking. She finally got out the car and, and said hi. He's getting emotional thinking about his mom and saying she liked the, the grass cut. So he said he's a fixer. He can't fix this, I guess. And so he was getting emotional. And Kelly invited him in. He said, I can't. I'm all sweaty. She said, it's okay. The doctor is visiting Alex. 
Alex says she's ready to get out of here. The doctor's telling Alex that every time she thinks she's better, her blood pressure shoots through the roof. She can't get out of the hospital until her blood pressure is uh, regulated. She said, today you're better, but I got to keep monitoring you. Stop getting upset. Brad is visiting Alex in the hospital. He walked through the door in a good mood, talking about, hello, honey, with roses in his hand. He wants to talk to Alex alone. The doctor said, no, you can't talk to her alone. Her blood pressure is rising with you just standing there. The doctor said, Brad Montgomery, stop it. Are you trying to kill this woman? He said, well, the doctor said you should be ashamed of yourself. He said, actually, she should be ashamed of herself. Alex said, I am ashamed of myself. Brad said he has a, a surprise for Alex when she gets home, as soon as she gets home. When would that be, doctor? The doctor said, as soon as you stop this torture. Brad puts the flowers down and walks out the door. Kelly called Marcy for Ramsey to see if he can list her home. But Marcy was trying to talk to Kelly on the phone, but Kelly was like acting like she didn't, she wasn't saying anything and saying, I'll, okay, I'll put him on the phone right now. Marcy's coming down there in 20 minutes to talk to Ramsey. She's probably going to be trying to talk to Kelly in person. Fawn came to the restaurant and all friendly with Joy saying hi. Joy uh, passed her the money without saying anything. And, you know, she takes the money to the bank. She's flirting with him. He, he said, don't you know my mother watching me like a hawk? She grabbed his hand and led him around the corner. She kissed him and asked him, did he miss her? He said, of course I do, but I can't do this. We can't do this. She's begging. My mom is watching us. Just go. When am I going to see you again? I'll call you later. He said, wait, wait, wait. Kiss me again. She said, I knew you wanted to. Then he pushed her away and said, be careful with that money. They're flirting before she walked out the door. Two cars are parked in front of the restaurant. The guy that uh, Eddie's wife, can't remember her name, used to date that Eddie shot him in the leg. And the guy who robbed the place in the past, they got in the car together. And they're looking at Fawn. Dude saying we hit, telling them they, they should hit Fawn for the money. He told Juan, if you don't have my money, you, not we, you, if you don't have my money, you're dead. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to, he's probably going to jack Fawn. He is going to jack Fawn because that's the plan. Randall's mom thinks he's going to, he's going to become another man pretty soon. She thinks that the blow that Marcy and Brad gave him is going to straighten him up. But he's out there and he's imagining himself and Alex in the shed. He's dreaming about himself and Alex. Oh, and now he sees Brad and Marcy. He's going between the two, him and Alex and Marcy and Brad, imagining. He is crazy. His eye twitching. Mama, you are wrong. He's crazy. The shed is wobbling. Oh, no. He crazy. He ain't gonna become a new man. He's gonna become a new crazy man. Mama says she leaving today. Please stay in touch. They're hugging. Marcy and Mama are hugging. Ooh! Randall grabbed her, Marcy by the head, and he's choking her, and it went off. Thank you for watching my reaction video for If Loving You Is Wrong. Pack natural.